Welcome to Simply RN. Today we will go over the different types of enteral tubes. Enteral means involving or passing through the gastrointestinal system. Enteral tubes are tubes that are placed into the gastrointestinal tract, usually in the stomach, duodenum, or jejunum. There are two main indications for enteral tubes, gastric decompression and enteral feeding. Gastric or stomach decompression is a medical term that refers to removing stomach contents by using suction. It usually helps to relieve nausea and vomiting caused by bowel obstruction. Enteral feeding is the delivery of nutrition and medications directly into the gastrointestinal tract via enteral tubes. Enteral feeding is indicated in patients with a functional gastrointestinal tract who cannot tolerate oral intake. For example, Patients who are in a coma, have decreased level of consciousness, or are alert but severely malnutritious, may receive enteral feeding for nutrition support. Patients with dysphagia, or difficulty swallowing who cannot safely swallow due to, for example, stroke, head and neck cancer, esophageal cancer, and etc. There are two common routes of enteral tubes nasogastric tube, or NG tube, and percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, or PEG tube. The main differences between the two is that NG tubes are for short-term use, usually less than four weeks and are inserted by nurses at bedside, while PEG tubes are for long-term use and are inserted via endoscopy by a clinician. As the name suggests, nasogastric tubes are inserted through a nostril into the esophagus and end up in the stomach. There are two types of NG tubes, double lumen and single lumen. Salem Sump is a double lumen NG tube placed for gastric decompression. It is larger and more rigid. One lumen is connected to suction for decompression, while the other lumen, usually blue in color, acts as a sump that allows air to enter the stomach to reduce the negative pressure created by the suction, and therefore to prevent the suction lumen from sticking to the stomach wall. The sump should never be clamped, connected to suction, or used for irrigation. Single lumen NG tubes are smaller in diameter and more flexible. Examples are Levin tubes and Dobhoff tubes. Levin tubes are simple single lumen tubes that are used for various purposes, including suction, irrigation, and enteral feeding. Dobhoff tubes, on the other hand, are used for enteral feeding and medications only. Dobhoff tubes have a guide wire, called a stylet, that helps to facilitate insertion and is removed insertion. Dobhoff tubes also have a weighted tip at the end of the tube for post-pyloric insertion. Post-pyloric means the tubes are advanced beyond the pyloric sphincter into the duodenum or jejunum. You may have heard them referred to as nesoduodenal tubes, ND tubes, and nasojejunal tubes, NJ tubes. That concludes nasogastric tubes, which are for short-term use. If a patient requires long-term enteral nutrition support, a percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy may be placed. PEG tubes are placed via an endoscopy and a small incision, called a stoma, that is made in the stomach through the skin. And the feeding tube is secured and comes out of the stoma so that it provides a direct percutaneous access to the stomach. As the name suggests, PEG tubes end in the stomach and they are used to deliver nutrition and also in some cases, they are also used for gastric decompression and are referred to as venting G-tubes. Venting G-tubes are usually palliative and help to relieve symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and abdominal discomfort caused by malignant bowel obstruction or other GI issues. Venting G-tubes are connected to a drainage bag when in use and the extra gastric contents are drained by gravity. A percutaneous tube can also be placed in the jejunum and is called a percutaneous endoscopic jejunostomy, or PEJ. PEJ bypasses the stomach and ends in the jejunum, and it is solely used for enteral feeding. Some patients may have a GJ tube or a gastrojejunostomy tube. A GJ tube has two access ports, a gastric port that leads to the stomach and a jejunal port that leads to the jejunum. It allows for feeding into the jejunum as well as simultaneous venting or decompression of the stomach through the gastric port. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to check out my study guides by clicking on the link in the description. As always, this video is for educational purposes only and not indicated for clinical use. See you next time.